everybody, welcome back to Kunai Crossover. Let's talk about Golden State Warriors right now. Marky Mark, what do you have for us? Uh, just, I guess, I don't know if it's a big concern because they just had a win against Houston without Durant, but uh, what are your thoughts about the Warriors this season compared to what they were last season and the year and the first season they won their championship with Durant? So tell us, what are your thoughts? Oh, should we be concerned with them or like they're just fine? I'm just going to say off the bat, I think the Warriors are winning. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But comparing them to the years before, I think this is the most vulnerable they have ever been. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly because defensively, in the past, all they had to do was hide Steph Curry on defense. Mm -hmm. You hide him and then everyone else can, can play the role. But now you got to hide Curry and Cousins. Mm -hmm. right? You put them in the pick and roll, then you kind of expose that defense a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you have the turmoil going inside the locker room, like with Kevin Durant, with Draymond, you know, where these guys' head, heads are at. But at the end of the day, like we saw yesterday, when the Warriors want to buckle down, they tend to get the job done. And there's just too much talent on that team, too many future Hall of Famers on that team mm -hmm. to say that they're not going to win this year. Like, mm -hmm. to me, they, they, they're still the clear cut. Yeah, shoe and yeah. using. Yeah. Your, your thoughts? Um, I mean, I kind of look at this NBA season like a giant episode of Black Mirror. Mm -hmm. Like, social media has infiltrated locker rooms with mm -hmm. all these rumors about KD going to the Knicks. Um, yeah. Like, he's having to answer for that in the locker room, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is something that past eras haven't really had to deal with. So, um, in terms of this Warriors team, that wrinkle of Kevin Durant's free agency, um, is different than last year where they dealt with a lot of injuries and still had similar struggles in terms of like losing questionable games and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But just with the fact of them having to deal with this free agency stuff is kind of throwing a bit of a monkey wrench um, into what they're trying to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, they're still a dominant team. Yeah. Um, they're probably more than likely going to win the championship. Um, I think that them adding DeMarcus Cousins might be not the best move just because they could have got some more players to strengthen out the roster instead of this one guy, right? Mm -hmm. But he's proven that, I think as of last night, especially against the Rockets, um, that he's well on his way towards recovering and playing at an all-star level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might have been a good insurance for them too if something in terms of the fact that they can get a low uh, inside presence from him, right. mm -hmm. which is a better kind of combination to, as opposed to Draymond, because Draymond is a good player, right. a good right. passer. Mm -hmm. But you won't get that inside kind of scoring from DeMarcus and the passing that he could do as well. Right. So yeah. he could pass as well as Draymond and can shoot better than Draymond. Mm -hmm. So if Draymond's not doesn't have it offensively and if he's not in his, you know, he's very emotional, he's not always going right. to be in his right mind at times, mm -hmm. you can get DeMarcus. But both of them are kind of volatile too. So it's yeah. well, Capella, it's just a fun season to have for them because they don't know what they're going to get from both. Right. Capella yeah. kind of learned that the hard way too with Cousins yesterday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like he yeah. couldn't guard him save his life. Yeah. So having, yeah, having that inside present offensively definitely gives him that boost especially yeah. if, if he comes off the bench in the playoffs mm -hmm. yeah. i think Curry's going to make an adjustment i there. think he's going to put boga back in uh, yeah either boga or like kavan looney and bring demarcus off the bench i think that's a better idea and like the one yeah. the other thing i really like about demarcus is just his overall size yeah he's a good screen setter for guys mm -hmm. like curry and clay who move without the ball yeah. who can who are really deadly right so just yeah. having that big body out there for those guys to run around causes havoc for the defense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think these guys also know that KD. It's probably looking elsewhere next year. That, yeah. That's what I'm thinking as well. So yeah. this might be the last opportunity to Get a tribute. be like the yeah. number one seed to yeah. win a championship. So mm -hmm. they have this opportunity, they're going to take it. And I think mm -hmm. in the playoffs, especially when you can plan for one game, one team per series, you're not going, you know, LA Lakers one day, then OKC the other day. Like you just have one game mm -hmm. for four to seven, one team for four to seven games. They're going to buckle down and get the job done. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, I guess we're all not worried about the Warriors. Yeah. Which is, no. you know, they're going to most likely are the favorite to win. They're going to that switch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the idea, and this was brought up uh, recently from <coughs> a week or two ago from Jeff and Nelly, just a really kind of out of the blue, never been heard before, the idea of if the Lakers should trade LeBron James. Like, what yeah. are your thoughts about that? Because it him. would sound... <laughs> trade, <laughs> trade him. Trade him. Trade him. Trade him. Trade him. Oh, what's your point? Why? Like, like, why trade him? Like, they got him for years. Yeah. Okay, so for the reason, I don't think they will trade him. I don't think you're going to get the value back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But why I would entertain the idea, you look at Ingram, who's now unfortunately hit with this uh, blood yeah. clot, right? Yeah. So his value kind of takes a hit because teams might be a little skeptical trade for him. Mm -hmm. Lonzo Ball gets injured every year. He's kind of, you don't know what you're going to get with him. Mm -hmm. So your young talent, the value has now gone down. Mm -hmm. LeBron James is getting older. Father Time's catching up. We saw that this year. And no real superstars are rumored to go to LA next year, to the mm -hmm. Lakers. So there's a chance that the Lakers might have the same team next year, mm -hmm. and that's obviously not going to win it. Mm -hmm. So if you have an opportunity to trade LeBron James, you can get some pieces, some young pieces, some yeah. picks, or even another superstar talent. Mm -hmm. Why would you not do that if you're Magic? 
He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, defend your boy right here. Yeah. Yeah. Defend in your theory, LeBron. What Jeff Van Gundy suggested is not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, but for the Lakers to trade LeBron James, as he said before, you're never going to get good value or the right value for a player like LeBron James. So therefore, it makes no sense to trade him. Mm -hmm. um, draft picks are questionable. There's only been a few draft picks, really. I mean, if you look at all the top teams in the NBA, their draft picks, a lot of them aren't even within the top five. Mm -hmm. So draft picks are kind of up in the air. Young pieces are also up in the air. Your best chance to win is having a guy who went to previously eight straight finals, albeit in the East, <laughs> That's your best chance for them to win a championship is to have that talent already on the roster and your best bet is to try to get guys to come over and hopefully you can build a team that can contend with the likes of the Warriors. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I stand. There's an, I don't think they should trade him. Yeah. You so, kind of chuckled at, <laughs> at his logic. Why say? Yeah. No, the A Street Finals, I always find that hilarious, but uh, yeah. that's, just, that's just my opinion on that. I mean, yeah. Grant is a great... Either way you look at it, it's impressive. It's a great yeah. achievement, you know, but... Yeah. The East was the East, the West, and now LeBron's seeing what it's like to play in the West. Yeah. But, <sighs> what I, you're, so, and I asked Troy this, you don't think James Dolan would give up that first overall pick if they get it for LeBron James? Like, you could get picks. And the Knicks I, have multiple If picks. they would get Zion, I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't, if I, don't, I get to get Zion compared to it, LeBron, like, uh, like It depends just, because the Knicks, they have their eyes on Kyrie Irving and Kevin yeah. Durant, right? If you have that number one pick, instead of actually taking Zion, you try to flip that for a guy like, like Anthony Davis. Davis. Yeah. So now you have those three players. I would take Davis over LeBron. Would yeah. you, I would take Anthony Davis over Zion because yeah. Zion, as much as we like his highlights and dunking, things like that, he's yeah. doing that in college. You don't, you don't yeah. know Come what to the NBA do. and let's see what happens, right? Yeah. And again, that's where the questions lie. So yeah. I know what I'm getting in a guy like AD. Yeah. I know somewhat what I'm getting with Zion, but he's unproven. Yeah, I agree mm -hmm. that. Like I would take... Davis over Zion, but I wouldn't take LeBron over Zion just because of the age difference. You don't know what's going to happen with LeBron next year. Mm -hmm. I personally That's, wouldn't do it either, but yeah. I don't trust James yes, Dolan. Yeah. I think James <laughs> yeah. Dolan would do it. So well, I'm just saying that if they fiddle around and start calling some teams, yeah. can they get picks? I think yeah. the opportunity to get picks is there. My mm -hmm. thing for the Lakers, they should have not signed LeBron and kept their core and changed the culture in, in Lakers in terms of if they would have kept Randall and signed him in terms of and, and D'Angelo and Brooke right. Lopez, they would have had a really good young team and just changed the culture culture around it because they've been a laughing stock in the NBA for a long time. And if Magic came and straightened the culture out, right. I think they would have he would have given them the opportunity to kind of have this kind of uh, uh, flourish and, and be the player that they are right now right. doing. Like Randall's having a season like 20 and 10 season. Yeah. The Angels having a most improved. He was an all star this season. If yeah. They would have just changed the culture in the Lakers and allow these players to have, you know, the ability to be not criticized, but then right. have this environment where they can grow and they can play the way they uh, they should be playing. Right. They would have had such a team with Lonzo, with D'Angelo, yeah. Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, and, and, and Julius Randle, and then they would have kept Zubak, Josh Hart. That's a right. really good young team. They just, I don't know why they're rushing for. And a lot of you know a lot of teams that that are really playing well right now or they're sustainable is because they built it organically. Like the Spurs, yeah. the Raptors built it organically. Yeah. Uh, Warriors have built it organically. I don't know why people are trying to rush for a championship where they, they have something so good to begin with. I, my take is they should have not even signed LeBron to begin with and just kept their core mm -hmm. and built through what they had because they had really talented players. Mm -hmm.